The following presentation is brought to you by Discovery Channel School, a leading provider of quality educational resources that help teachers bring the world to their students. From its northern shores to its southern tip, South America is the fourth largest continent and more than 300 million people call it home. Most of these people live in urban areas. Outside of the cities, there are huge areas of land in which very few people live. South America spans diverse climate zones, vegetation regions, and topography. The people, plants, and animals here have adapted to environments of extreme variation. Running the length of the continent's west coast, the Andes soar to 20,000 feet in some places. They separate the coast from the rolling plains to the east. The Native Americans living in the Andes raise llamas and alpacas, whose wool keeps them warm in the high mountains. They weave the wool into blankets and rugs that are used not only by the local people, but are shipped all over the world. Most of South America is in the southern hemisphere below the equator. South of the equator, summer stretches from late December to late March and winter from late June to late September, just the opposite of the seasons in the northern hemisphere. In South America, you'll find a wide variety of climate zones from tropical to Arctic. Tropical climates are hot and wet. The Amazon rainforest, the world's largest rainforest, is in a tropical climate. This huge rainforest spans the equator, running through much of the northern third of South America. At its center is the Amazon River Basin. The temperature in this area averages about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Don't forget your umbrella. It rains here nearly every day. Second in length only to the Nile in Africa, the Amazon flows 4,000 miles from Peru through Brazil. Its extensive system of tributaries carries more water than any other river and drains an area that is more than two million square miles. It is home to astonishing varieties of fish, including the deadly piranha. It also provides the only access to the interior of the dense rainforest. The Kayapo Indians live near the Amazon River in Brazil. This dance celebrates the abundance of manioc, a starchy plant that is a staple in their diet. Manioc thrives in the warm, wet climate of this area. Dry climates, like the Atacama Desert of Chile, are hot and arid. They receive little rainfall. Because weather systems move from east to west here, the Andes block rain from reaching this region. Little vegetation grows in the Atacama, but the land is rich with mineral deposits. Copper mines dot the landscape and are Chile's most valuable natural resource. 
humid subtropical climates have hot, wet summers and cool winters. The grasslands of Argentina and Paraguay, called the Pampas, have a humid subtropical climate. This area is ideal for growing crops like wheat and soybeans and for raising cattle. South America's geography ranges from cold, high mountains to wet, tropical areas to wide, grass-covered plains. The people who live in these areas have adapted to the climate and the topography. They have also learned to use the resources of their environment, from wool for blankets, to copper for export, to make a living. The northern region of South America consists of Colombia, Venezuela, Guyana, Suriname, and French Guiana. Guyana, Suriname, and French Guiana are bounded by the Atlantic Ocean to the north and northeast. Venezuela is bordered both by the Atlantic Ocean and the Caribbean Sea. And Colombia is bordered by the Caribbean Sea and the Pacific Ocean. All five countries share borders with Brazil. South America is culturally diverse. Spanish is the official language in Colombia and Venezuela. Most people in Guyana speak English, in Suriname, Dutch, and in French Guiana, French. A plateau called the Guiana Highlands is situated in southern Venezuela and northern Brazil, and it extends into Guyana and Colombia. The highlands ecosystem hosts vast expanses of rainforest and open savannas punctuated by forests. The most notable highlands landmark is Angel Falls in Venezuela, the world's highest waterfall. The northern region of South America is home to many fascinating creatures, including the largest snake in the world. The green anaconda can grow 30 feet long and weigh 1,200 pounds. Though usually feared by people, giant anacondas are not particularly aggressive. The snake lives in the swampy waters of the Venezuelan Llanos, the lowland savanna that is flooded each year during the rainy season. But the anaconda's habitat is shrinking due to industrial development in South America's Llanos. Conservationists and environmental organizations in this region are working to protect the natural habitats of South America and its creatures. located in the northern coast of South America. It is bordered by Venezuela to the west, Brazil to the southwest and south, Suriname to the east, and the Atlantic Ocean to the north. Guyana has a total area of 134,000 square miles, just slightly smaller than the state of Idaho. The Guyanese speak English, Creole, and Hindi. Much of its land is uninhabited because most of the country's three quarters of a million people live along its narrow coastal strip. Mighty rivers run through Guyana, including the Essequibo. They provide essential highways into the rainforest and jungles of the interior. Georgetown, the country's capital and largest city, is located at the mouth of the Demerara River. The climate in Guyana is tropical and humid. The average temperature ranges between 73 degrees and 86 degrees Fahrenheit. The rainy season occurs in May and June, and again in December and January, with an average annual rainfall of 90 inches. 
Guyana is a travel destination for real nature and wildlife lovers. The giant river otter, the black caiman, and one of the largest freshwater fish in the world, the huge piraraku, swims in the country's rivers. More than 700 indigenous species of birds adorn Guyana's skies, including the Amazon kingfisher and the remarkable but hard to find Guyana Cock of the Rock lingers around the waters of Kaitura Falls. Guyana's rainforest is full of animal life. Termites, giant toads, golden frogs, many snakes, the mouse opossum, and the great anteater all inhabit the lush landscape. Guyana's rich natural resources and exciting flora and fauna make it a popular ecotourism destination. <music> Colombia is located in northwestern South America and is bordered by Panama in the northwest, which divides the Caribbean Sea in the north from the Pacific Ocean in the west, Venezuela and Brazil on the east, and Peru and Ecuador on the south. Colombia is slightly less than three times the size of Montana, and home to more than 41 million people. It is the only South American country with coastlines on both the North Pacific Ocean and the Caribbean Sea. Its land is marked by thousands of miles of coastline, vast savannas and lowland plains, thick jungles and the high snow-capped mountains of the Andes. In fact, most people live in the mountainous interior where Bogota, the capital, is located. Most Colombians speak Spanish. Even though Christopher Columbus never stepped foot on Colombian soil, Colombia is named for him. Colombia is most famous for its emeralds, found primarily in the Muso mines of the Cordillera Oriental mountain range, part of the Andes. The Muso district is the biggest of Colombia's emerald mine complexes, containing underground and surface mines. Emeralds have been mined in Colombia for over 400 years. Before the arrival of the Spanish conquistadors in the 16th century, Indians gave emeralds as sacred offerings to their gods. In the narrow, dark, and humid tunnels of the mines, thousands of workers toil around the clock. They chip away at rock walls, searching for gems. Finding an emerald is hard work. Experts estimate that for every 10 tons of dirt and rock removed from the mine, on average a one carat emerald is found. Still, local people search the stream that runs from the mine in hopes of finding emeralds that miners might have missed. Their hard work often goes unrewarded, as very few stones of value make it to the riverbed. The hard-working people and intricate Colombian landscape make this South American country as treasured as its emeralds. The eastern region of South America includes Brazil, Paraguay, Uruguay, and Argentina. Uruguay and Paraguay are small compared to the much larger countries of Brazil and Argentina. Uruguay has a little over three million people, and Paraguay just over six million. Argentina is 2,360 miles long and is home to vastly diverse topographic regions. The climate of Argentina also varies from subtropical in the north to cold and windswept in the south. Brazil, the fifth largest country in the world, contains most of the Amazon basin, the world's largest river system, and miles of untouched rainforest. On the border of Brazil and Argentina is the Iguazu National Park, home to the Iguazu Falls, a series of cataracts or waterfalls. Iguazu Falls extends 1.7 miles, with rocky islands dividing the water into 275 separate waterfalls. 
much of the Iguazu River falls into a semicircular area called the Garganta do Diablo, or Devil's Throat. The loud crashing water can be heard up to two miles away. The volume of water across the falls varies and reaches its highest volume during the rainy season from November to March. During this time, 450,000 cubic feet of water a second rush over the escarpment, or steep slope. The water from the falls supports an ecosystem of wildlife in the surrounding rainforest. The mist that rises spreads moisture to the lush vegetation. Iguazu National Park is home to more than 2,000 species of butterflies, more than in any other single location in the world. Butterflies and other insects are a key part of the food chain in the rainforest ecosystem. Even in this protected area, poaching and rainforest destruction remain a problem. Government officials and conservationists are working to protect Iguazu Falls, the rainforest, and the wildlife. All represent the diversity of eastern South America's natural beauty. Brazil is the largest country in South America and shares a border with every country except Ecuador and Chile. Brasilia is its capital, but its two largest cities are Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo. Rio's Corcovado Mountain is home to the famous statue of Christ the Redeemer that looks out across the city, welcoming travelers to Rio with open arms. The people of Brazil are a blend of cultures and races. Most are descendants of Europeans, Africans, or Native Americans, or a mix of these groups. Whatever their background, once a year, people in Brazil celebrate Carnival, the most lavish festival in all of South America. When the Portuguese explorers colonized Brazil in the 1500s, they brought thousands of Africans as slaves to work on sugarcane plantations. They also brought Roman Catholicism. Today, most Brazilians belong to the Catholic Church. One tradition in the Catholic religion is observing Lent, the 40 days before Easter. Lent is a solemn time of prayer and fasting. It became a tradition to throw a big party with feasting and dancing before Lent began. The party is called Carnival. It's celebrated all over the world. In New Orleans, Carnival is called Mardi Gras. The many Africans who were brought to Brazil as slaves added their own traditions to the celebration of Carnival. Dancing is a major part of the festivities. The most popular dance here is the samba, a Brazilian folk dance with African origins. Children start learning the fancy footwork of the samba at a young age, with hopes that one day they will be part of the parade. In Rio de Janeiro, Carnival is a time to display spectacular parade floats, samba dancing, and elaborate costumes. There are nearly as many people in the parade as people watching the parade. Here, Carnival is a competition, and each parade group is judged in 10 categories, including costumes, music, choreography, and floats. Brazilians spend all year preparing for this once a year celebration. It attracts spectators from all over the world, and the party doesn't end until Lent begins. The African heritage in Brazil remains strong. The culture here is alive with African influence, from dancing and music, to the foods, to the way Carnival has evolved. Like Brazil, Carnival brings people of all different races and cultures together, from the Portuguese influence to the African culture, to the Native American traditions, 
Brazil celebrates diversity. Uruguay, the second smallest country in South America, and Paraguay are located in Central South America. Uruguay is bordered by the Atlantic Ocean to the south and east, Argentina to the west, and Brazil to the north. Uruguay is home to 3.4 million people, the majority of whom speak Spanish. Paraguay, a landlocked nation slightly smaller than California, is enclosed by Bolivia on the north and west, Argentina to the south and west, and Brazil to the northeast. Just over six million people live in Paraguay, where the official languages are Spanish and Guarani. The national capital of Paraguay is Asuncion, located on the east bank of the Paraguay River. Rivers play an important role in Paraguay, providing the country with access to the Atlantic Ocean. Because of its many rivers and remote location, Paraguay is referred to as the island surrounded by land. Originally inhabited by the Guarani people, Paraguay was later settled by Spanish colonists. In the 17th century, Jesuits established missions in eastern Paraguay. Today, even though the government of Paraguay recognizes no official religion, more than 95% of the population professes adherence to Roman Catholicism. Dia de San Juan, or the Fiesta of San Juan, is a celebration of the birth of St. John the Baptist, a Christian religious figure. The people of Paraguay participate in dangerous games during the week-long festival to test their faith and to prove their purity and courage. Fire figures prominently, with celebrants kicking burning balls and facing flaming bulls, all in the name of St. John. They also compete on horseback and get together at feasts to celebrate the saint's day of birth. Paraguay's rich traditions and cultural life are vividly revealed at festivals like the Dia de San Juan. Argentina is the eighth largest country in the world and the second largest in South America. Argentina is bordered by Chile to the south and west, Bolivia and Paraguay to the north, and Brazil, Uruguay, and the Atlantic Ocean to the east. Argentina's large land area is remarkably diverse, including the Andes Mountains along the western border, the thorny scrubland and seasonal swamps of the Gran Chaco, the broad fertile plains of the Pampas, and the stark tableland of Patagonia. The capital of Argentina is Buenos Aires, one of the world's most populous cities. Buenos Aires is also an important port located on the shore of the Rio de la Plata. Argentina is a country rich in natural resources. Almost 39 million people live in Argentina, and most speak Spanish. At one time, Spanish explorers and settlers colonized Argentina. The native Diaguita tribes were forced into labor. Most Argentines are the descendants of these native people and immigrants from Europe. So Argentina has developed a unique and culturally rich national character. Like the American cowboy, the gaucho is one of the country's best known folk heroes and cultural symbols. These skilled horsemen roamed Argentina's grasslands from the mid 18th century to the mid 19th century. They were nomadic and worked as cowhands, rounding up cattle for auction. Their culture and way of life is celebrated through Argentinian literature and song. San Antonio hosts the Fiesta de la Tradición, the tradition festival, a celebration of all things gaucho every November. People from all over Argentina and even the world attend this annual festival. Festival goers embark on a week of gaucho parades. They buy and wear gaucho accessories, like silver-studded belts and knives made by local craftsmen. 
Visitors also compete in writing competitions and participate in workshops to keep the tradition of these colorful characters alive and well. The people who live in Argentina, as well as countless visitors and tourists, enjoy a beautiful, colorful country, rich in culture and history. Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia, and Chile make up the western region of South America. Ecuador, Peru, and Chile are bordered on the west by the Pacific Ocean. Bolivia is landlocked, meaning it has no coastline. Lake Titicaca, the second largest lake in South America, sits on the border between Bolivia and Peru. Running through western South America, the Andes mountain range are the highest peaks in the western hemisphere. Mount Aconcagua, on the border of Chile and Argentina, tops them all. The Andes are sparsely populated, except in capital cities such as La Paz in Bolivia. The other capitals in western South America are Santiago in Chile, Quito in Ecuador, and Lima in Peru. Like many countries in South America, Peru is a mix of different influences. Indigenous or native cultures, Spanish colonialism and Catholicism are all blended here. Peru is a rapidly developing country. It has more than 24 million people and many natural resources. But the people, history and traditions make Peru rich. Ayacucho, a rural city in Peru, draws many people from this region and from all over South America as it celebrates the Christian Holy Week. Semana Santa is a four-day celebration of Easter. During the festivities, processions, devotional events, dancing, fireworks, and celebration take place as people show their religious devotion and joy. The cultural celebrations of the people in Peru reflect the traditions and customs of the western region of South America. Bolivia lies in west-central South America. It is bordered to the north and east by Brazil, to the southeast by Paraguay, to the south by Argentina, to the southwest and west by Chile, and to the northwest by Peru. Bolivia is landlocked, but it shares Lake Titicaca, the world's highest navigable lake with Peru. One third of the country lies in the Andes mountain range, including its capital, La Paz. Bolivia consists of three main population groups, the indigenous Quechua, mestizos or people of mixed Indian and European heritage, and Europeans of Spanish origin. 30% of Bolivians are Quechua Indians, descendants of the Inca, who were converted to Catholicism by Spanish settlers. Quillacoyo is a small town lying on the outskirts of Cochabamba, the third largest city in Bolivia. An important religious celebration, the Feast of the Urcupina, attracts many believers and visitors to Quillacoyo every August. Urcupina is one of Bolivia's largest celebrations. People travel to this hilltop to chip off pieces of sacred rock to take with them for good luck. The custom is rooted in the belief that the Christian figure Mary appeared to a shepherd girl on a hill sometime in the 1800s. According to legend, the girl was told that the hill contained riches and that people could come there to pray for miracles. Today, the week-long celebration of Urcupina includes parades and processions with dozens of dancing groups that keep Bolivia's dramatic dance traditions alive. 
Oscar Cupina vibrantly illustrates Bolivia's blend of Catholicism with the indigenous traditions and culture of the Quechua Indians. Located on the western coast of South America, Peru shares borders with Ecuador, Colombia, Brazil, Bolivia, and Chile. Peru is a country of contrasts. Its vegetation changes dramatically from the coastal plains to the Andes to the tropical rainforests. Life in the country's big cities is a world away from rural areas where people often live without cars or telephones. In this country, the modern mixes with the tradition. Life is changing in this countryside. Let's take a look at how Peruvians are finding new ways to make a living by using natural resources. Peru has a wealth of natural resources. Many people here make their living off the land. Volcanoes that last erupted millions of years ago formed the Andes. Underneath these mountains are volcanic remains. The lava left behind contains rich mineral deposits such as gold, silver, and copper. Maria Alfaros works as a truck driver who hauls mineral-rich soil in the largest gold mine in Peru. This is not traditional work for women, but it does allow her to support her family. It's helped a lot of women, women who are also single mothers. This is a great help to us. We are proud to be the first ones. I don't plan to stay here my whole life. I'm planning to save and open up my own business. At the end of her eight-hour shift, Maria rides the company bus home. The success of the gold mine has brought prosperity to this village. At one time, it was unusual to see cars here, but no longer. In the city of Ica, nestled in the highlands region between the coast and the Andes, asparagus farms thrive. In fact, Peru is the world's largest exporter of asparagus. Ica is like a giant greenhouse. It never snows, it never rains. It hasn't rained for like a million years in Ica. The peaks of the Andes shield the highlands from rainfall. Farmers tap an underground water supply to make up for this lack of moisture. With water and fertile soil, you can actually see the asparagus growing nearly half an inch an hour. After farmers harvest the asparagus, they take it to a processing plant, and it gets shipped all over the world. In the highlands of northern Peru, near Ecuador, another valuable natural resource lies just below the surface of the earth. For centuries, artists have used the thick, wet clay to make pots. The clay hardens when it dries in the sun's heat, or is heated in special ovens called kilns. These are baked at 950 degrees. 
This is what it sounds like. In comparison to ceramics made before, these are of much better quality. These artisans use the ancient method of paddling to transform a ball of clay into a beautiful pot. This family has been producing clay pots for generations. Today, they make pots that are sold around the world. Peru is a land of geographic extremes and rich natural resources. Although many people live in poverty, others are finding new ways to make a living. They are developing industries, improving agricultural methods, and creating products that are sold around the world. A Spanish ship off the coast of Peru captured a raft filled with fine textiles, silver and gold. To Francisco Pizarro, the captain of the ship, this floating treasure chest was a sign. The mythical city of gold called El Dorado must exist. But Pizarro didn't realize he would have to contend with the Inca Empire first. The Inca Empire stretched 2,000 miles through the length of the Andes mountain range, covering parts of present-day Peru, Ecuador, Bolivia, Argentina, and Chile. Had Pizarro known the Inca armies numbered 30,000, he might have thought twice before invading. About the time of Pizarro's discovery of the gold-laden raft, Inca messengers were relaying tragic news. The emperor was dead. Two rivals fought for control of the Inca throne. Pizarro would arrive just in time to use the power struggle to his advantage. In addition to the civil war, smallpox, brought earlier by Spaniards, had swept across the continent. Half the empire's population had been wiped out by the contagious disease. Atahualpa, the emperor's son, finally gained control of the throne, but his victory would be short-lived. Francisco Pizarro and his 180 men marched into the heart of the war and disease-torn Inca Empire in 1532. The Incas had never seen horses before, and many were afraid of these strange creatures. The emperor and more than 3,000 of his men went to meet Pizarro, unarmed. It was a brutal massacre. The Inca were no match against the Spaniards, and Atahualpa was taken prisoner. The emperor promised Pizarro three rooms full of gold and silver in exchange for his freedom. The Spaniards gladly took the precious metals, but Atahualpa was not set free. The Spaniards executed Atahualpa in 1533. Now under Spanish rule, the Inca people and culture were first subdued and then permanently changed. By 1535, the empire had dissolved. His fortune made Pizarro built a new Spanish capital, Lima. Eventually, Pizarro's luck ran out. He was killed in Lima in 1541, just a few short years after founding his new capital.
This is the Elo Valley, a narrow green oasis that was the key to life for the Chiribaya. Located in the southernmost part of Peru, on the edge of the Atacama Desert, the valley was carved and nourished by the waters of the Asmor River. Around the 10th century AD, the Chiribaya settled the entire valley from the Pacific coast to about 25 miles inland. They lived there for more than 500 years, then disappeared. Today, scientists are discovering new evidence of the Chiribaya, a culture that had been virtually unknown even to the modern people of Peru. Archaeologists are finding clues to the past in the Chiribaya's graves. The arid climate and the dry desert sand naturally mummified the bodies of their dead. But not all of the bodies were human. In one grave, archaeologists found a sacrificed llama. Laid to rest in a place of honor, it represents one of the Chiribaya's most valuable resources. From another tomb, they recover the pipes of a flute, similar to instruments still used throughout the region. Another grave yields spectacular ceramic pots, heavily decorated with geometric shapes. These vessels were used to hold water and food. The Chiribaya believed they would need these household goods in the next life. Most tombs have at least one piece of fine pottery, suggesting there was a class of artisans who produced ceramics. Finally, the body of a Chiribaya individual is discovered, wrapped in a dusty red cloth. It seems the Chiribaya believed that preserving the body would allow the spirit to endure, so every effort was made to keep it intact for as long as possible. This individual was buried with typical Chiribaya offerings, including eight ceramic vessels and the heads of two sacrificed llamas. The wool from these animals may have been used to weave the vibrant textiles and pouches buried with the body. By carefully examining such mummies and their artifacts, archaeologists have been able to construct a picture of what Chiribaya life must have been like. During the time of the Chiribaya, somewhere between A.D. 900 and 1350, the Elo Valley would have looked quite different. On the banks of the Asmor River, the richest soil was devoted to farming. The Chiribaya irrigated their land by diverting water to a series of terraces where they lived in houses of cane and mud. Here they also buried their loved ones in cemeteries close to their homes. Most of the Chiribaya dead were mummified naturally, without special treatment. But an X-ray has revealed that this body may have been specially prepared as a ritual for burial. Nearly 500 Chiribaya mummies have been examined, and only seven of those were ritually prepared. This suggests that only important members of the society received this extra care. Are those leaves? Oh, uh, this is, yes. That is a leaf inside, there, there. Coca leaves, sort of coca inside. Inside the body is a pot filled with coca leaves. The coca is a sacred plant to people of Peru. To make room for the leaves, a bit of preparation was necessary. Through an incision in the abdomen, the embalmers removed all of the internal organs, including the lungs, liver, kidneys, intestines, and stomach. They put the small ceramic pot full of coca leaves into the empty cavity, placing it up inside the rib cage. Then they packed what little space remained with wads of llama wool and closed the incision with stitches. Llama wool quickly absorbs moisture, depriving tissue decaying bacteria of water. Archaeologists think this man was probably 60 or 70 years old. He must have been very important for his people to put so much effort and time 
into making sure he could still be part of their lives after he was gone. The mummy's date of death was somewhere between AD 1350 and 1450, close to the end of Chiribayan culture. Scientists continue to search for mummies from all phases of Chiribayan history, looking for clues that will provide a more detailed picture of how this culture developed through time. The longest, narrowest country in the world is named after the Indian word that means where the land ends. Chile stretches nearly 2,700 miles along the Andes down the western side of South America. The mountains form Chile's borders with Bolivia and Argentina. Chile's capital city, Santiago, lies in the shadow of the Andes and in the middle of the country. Welcome to Santiago, Chile. A third of Chile's total population lives in Santiago, more than five million people. It is the sixth largest city in South America. Most of the people here are of Spanish and Native American heritage. Santiago is like many big cities in the United States. It has an extensive public transportation system, public parks, a business district, and lots of arts and culture. A square in the heart of the city called the Plaza de Armas is a place where friends meet, workers take their lunch breaks, and visitors stroll. And like other large urban areas, Santiago has its share of pollution problems. Just as the Andes shield the Atacama Desert from rain, the mountains also block pollution from escaping. Santiago's location in the Central Valley, shielded by mountains, traps exhaust from vehicles and smoke from industries within the city. Many workers in Santiago commute to work on buses. Chile's copper mines are a natural resource that has brought wealth to Santiago. Copper mines in the hills of the Andes have helped Chile become the world's leading producer of this metal. These mines employ many Chileans. The headquarters for this and other industries like coal and steel are in Santiago. The Spanish founded Santiago in 1541 and it became the capital in 1818, the year Chile gained independence from Spanish rule. Today, the Spanish influence can be seen in the architecture throughout the city. The presidential palace and other government buildings are near the Plaza de Armas. The palace called La Moneda has been the stage for political uprisings and bombings over the years. Like other cities in South America, most people in Santiago have Spanish backgrounds. Or they are descendants of French, Germans, or Italians. Some people are mestizos, a mix of European and Native American Indian background. Spanish culture has survived here from the colonial period. Santiago is a great place to see the cueca, the national dance of Chile. These young people are dancers with the folklorical ballet of Santiago. Musicians play guitars, piano, accordions, and other instruments to accompany the dancers. Sports are part of the culture in Santiago, and the most popular is soccer. 
You'll find people playing soccer everywhere in Santiago. Kids start playing soccer at a young age here. Informal soccer games are a part of everyday life. Santiago is a center for business, arts, and culture. It is a place where many Chileans find employment and a taste of a modern city in the shadow of the Andes. Ecuador is located on the equator, and that's where it gets its name. It occupies part of the Amazon basin and straddles the Andes Mountains. Ecuador is bordered to the north by Colombia, Peru to the east and the south, and the Pacific Ocean to the west. Almost 14 million people live in Ecuador, a country slightly smaller than the state of Nevada. The official language is Spanish. The capital of Ecuador is Quito, which was once the northern capital of the ancient Inca Empire. Quito is located in the north-central part of the country, among the Andes Mountains. Ecuador is home to Cotopaxi, the highest active volcano in the world. Ecuador also includes the Pacific Island group of the Galapagos Islands. Part of the 8,010 square miles in the Galapagos was designated a wildlife sanctuary in 1935. The Galapagos Islands enjoy warm and dry weather with an average yearly temperature of 82.4 degrees Fahrenheit. The islands are home to thousands of plant and animal species, most of which are not found anywhere else on the planet. In fact, Life on the Galapagos Islands was studied by the English naturalist Charles Darwin in 1835. Later, he wrote a book called Origin of Species about the theory of natural selection based on his research. The islands are perhaps best known for their giant tortoises, which have some of the longest lifespans of any creature on Earth. Galapagos tortoises can live to be 150 years old. Today, Many people visit both the Galapagos Islands and Ecuador because of their vast environmental diversity. Ecuador also has a deeply ingrained cultural heritage and a rich economic potential.